Hey there, NavyDoc5184 here. Welcome to my next reaction to Star Wars The Acolyte. We are hitting up episode five, Night. So uh, just want to recap on episode four a little bit. I think I know who the master is. I think it's Kamir. And honestly, when I kind of look back on it, I know in episode four, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, this guy has got to know more than what he's letting on, you know, that he's got to be a bigger player. I think he himself is actually the Lord, which might seem kind of weird considering he got himself caught in like a Scooby-Doo trap as a, you know, I've seen some people like to call it. But the reason I think it's him kind of stems back to episode two, because if you look at the way in episode four, when, um, the master, which I guess, uh, thankfully, I've somehow managed to avoid um, spoilers on this because you know it, it takes, you know, less than 24 hours for you know they'll probably come. But um, the one thing I've been seeing is they've called him the stranger, so that's what I'll go with. But um, if you look at how he approached Osha at the end of episode four, and almost kind of like the posture he took, it almost looked like the exact same posture. Um, Kamir took in episode two when he walked up to Osha and he realized that that wasn't May. But the other thing that kind of hit, and it's kind of what um, I think I hit that in my last uh, reaction, was just like how he, just the information he had. Obviously, you know, sm I think he said he was a smuggler or whatnot. Obviously, you have to have your sources and knowledge, but. I can't imagine, you know, a smuggler having so much info on a Jedi, you know, like he did with Torben and everything. It's like, I just don't see how it can't be him. And I'm not going to lie. There is a part of me that kind of hopes it's not because I'm the type where it's, I like to think I have things figured out and then I find out I'm wrong because sometimes when I am able to figure it out. I don't really necessarily say it's like poor writing or anything like that. It's just, you know, I just think I've always loved kind of like mystery stuff and trying to figure things out to the point that I've almost gotten pretty good at doing that. So there's a part of me, it's just kind of like, I want to be able to be fooled, you know, but I don't think I would be insanely disappointed if it was him, you know, at the same time, because I don't know, I'm not going to lie. The character, Tamir himself, is to me is kind of a cool character but but the other thing that i'm going into this episode actually very worried about and it's something that i'm only i'm actually surprised i'm only now kind of really realizing is that in order for this story to really be um you know in line with canon and everything everybody has to die which really sucks because i really like jackie and I do not want her to die. She is really cool. And honestly, even Yord is kind of growing on me. I mean, he's kind of like, he seems like kind of, I guess you could say kind of like a stiff really by the book and everything. But then again, if you look at it, that's kind of uh, in line with a Jedi being by the book, you know, which is probably why I tend to gravitate towards someone like Qui-Gon Jinn where he, you know, isn't completely by the book. You know, but you see where that got him in terms of the hierarchy, in terms of the Jedi. But and then you kind of got Soul, which, you know, is like in that same mind. And I really, really like Soul. But I'm really curious to see what happens because he was talking about, you know, once they get May, how he was going to explain everything to Osha, which, as I said, basically indirectly confirmed to me that the Jedi had a lot more to do with the destruction of that coven than was being led on by what we saw in episode three. And again, it just kind of goes to the whole certain point of view thing. So that was probably, you know, just told from just like the point of view of probably like the Jedi or Osha, whereas May might know a thing or two more about that. But the other thing that also I'm still really trying to find an answer for is, you know, what, how did May survive that fall? And um, if Kamir is the stranger, you know, how did he come about finding her and training her? But at the same time, why is he also kind of targeting these four Jedi? Did they wrong him in some sort of way? I don't know. So 
it just seems kind of weird that he's tar he himself is targeting these four Jedi, but then again, it could just be part of a larger plot that he's just using May for, and knowing May has beef with these four particular Jedi, maybe that's why, I don't know, maybe we'll figure that out in episode 5, but at the same time, I'm just like, especially with the way episode 4 ended, I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm sorry to use a Star Trek term in a Star Wars thing, but, you know, outside of Jeki, Yord, and Soul, all the other Jedi are like red shirts, so I would not be surprised if they all die in this episode. I'm just very curious to see, you know, how things turn out, especially since May was, you know, wanting to turn herself in, but um, I think that's pretty much all I got for the recap and, you know, any, any thoughts I might have going into the episode. Um, just really, really anxious and nervous now, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, so um, we will go ahead and just uh, get started with the episode. Let's do it. Hey there, thanks for stopping by and I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the content and would like to give some extra support to the channel, feel free to check the description for various ways to do so. Some which will include an affiliate link to Dubby, uh, which you use, you get a 10% off your order. And also a link to my merch store, which is constantly running promotions and deals, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which you can get exclusive perks and content. Naturally, liking the video and leaving a comment helps as well. Thanks again and enjoy the video. OSHA got yeeted like she was nothing. Wonder how much damage has been done by now. Okay, what the heck did she trip on? Oh! Well, there's one of our red shirts. <laughs> Jeez, look at that. How much force was behind that force push? Pun kind of intended. Oh, oh, well, there's another red shirt gone. What the? Oh, okay, I need some explanations on that. No, no, your, your. Okay, lightsaber's back. Uh, yes. Protect your. Oh, jeez. Dude, he's take. Oh! Okay, not gonna lie, that was a pretty smooth kill. Oh no, no. OSHA fire, save Yord! It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Oh, I don't have a bad feeling for OSHA. No freaking way. My man! A little dramatic much? There's that head tilt. Tell you, that's gotta be Kamir. Oh, uh, why do I have a feeling this is gonna be a very action heavy episode? You don't remember me. I sense something familiar. Carry a Jedi weapon, but you are no Jedi. Clearly not. <laughs> Woo! Oh, okay. Jackie's still alive, at least. Uh, May, what happened to turning yourself into the Jedi? Seems to change your demeanor real quick. I mean, granted, Jackie did kind of come out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. Not gonna lie, pretty solid uh moves here. What master hides his face from his pupil? You tell me. Ooh. What is he, Yord? I don't know. He's into your head and he he stays there. My mother could do that. I saw it once. Ooh. Mother Coral? I guess I could see it. 
Nicely done, Jackie. You took Master Kilnaka's saber. Oh no. No, 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 no. Jackie! Oh lord. Dude, he took out how many masters? How is she gonna handle him? Or her? Wow, Jackie is holding her own. I'm impressed. Oh, well, goodbye. What the? Okay, what is up with this? Why does he keep disappearing? Well, I'm, I'm just going to call him Kamir until I'm proven otherwise. But then again, looking at his arms, I don't think... Then again, Kamira was covered up quite a bit, so we never did rest necessarily see, you know, how built he was. Master, I was weak. You've always been weak. Well, she certainly had a quick change of heart, didn't she? Uh, he's still gonna kill her, though. Oh, no, he's not. Oh! That would've been, I'm not gonna lie, that would've been a heck of a takeout. Dude, they are working really good as a team. Dude, he is determined to kill her. He's gonna kill them all. Wait a minute. Follow me. Oh, I see what she's gonna do. She's gonna bring those things. Okay, okay. Uh, hopefully they're not too far. Okay, there is something about his armor. Someone please in the comments explain what that is, what's going on there. Oh, nice, Jackie, nice. Nicely Oh, no. No! No! Oh, it is. Come here, you son of a bitch. Oh, no, why, Jackie? If Soul was my number one favorite character, Jackie was easily number two. No. Whoa! You really didn't know it was me. Okay. I knew he had a build on him, but I did not know he was that jacked. Holy crap. So what's Kamir's beef with him? I have no name, but a Jedi like you might call me Sith. Why risk discovery? Well, I, I did wear a mask. Solid point. I don't make the rules. The Jedi do. And the Jedi say I can't exist. Yeah. What the? Oh, nicely done, Yorg. You. Surprise. Yo, what the? He literally has killed everybody so far. Osha and Saul are the only ones in that party who have not been killed yet. Ooh, that one felt more brutal than Jackie's. Oh, take this fool out. Screw Jedi Code, he needs to go. This is your master. You trust him? Even after everything he did to you. <laughs> His mind is twisted by darkness. I've accepted my darkness. <clears throat> what have you done with yours? What does he know? <laughs> 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 okay, yep. 
That's what I thought, using the light. I don't foresee this being the end of him, though, but... but then again, how does he get out of this? <laughs> then again, how many times do we ask ourselves that and they somehow find a way to get out of it? What did you do? It has to be Brendos. What have you done? I did what I needed to do. They've brainwashed you. They've turned you against me. You have done that yourself. I can help you return to yourself. Don't choose them again. Please choose me. Choose us. I would not trust her. She tried to kill you, woman. <laughs> You're a criminal, May. You must pay for your crimes. He stole you from us. He saved my life. <laughs> It wasn't that long of a fall. But then again, if you weren't really ready and not bracing yourself. Oh, she about to pull a switcheroo. Oh, well, there's Pip. Yeah, I had a feeling they weren't going to kill him off. I forgot about Basil already. Saul, are you alright? Where is she? Your sister? She's gone. Let me help you. Okay, well, I was gonna say, Saul's gotta sense something, but he was just stunned, so maybe not. Million dollar question is, what's the council gonna... Actually, that raises even another question now that I think about it. I'll, I'll get to that later. Man, that was fast paced. Even in the revelation of our triumph, you see the depth of our despair. Curious. All right, that was Star Wars The Acolyte Episode 5 Night, and that is a lot of crap to unpack, and I definitely don't have enough time for the end of this video to probably give it the attention it really needs because, wow. R.I.P. Jackie, man, she was like the MVP of all that, and then, oof, man. Honestly, I don't know who had it worse between her and Yord. Ugh. Man. So, suspicion was correct. It was Kamir. They did actually a very good job in actually making me doubt that for a second, thinking it was Coral. But, you know, like, the few times where I saw the arms, I'm like, not that females can't be that built. Yes, there are females that are built like that, but I don't think they would have, you know, I guess you could say do the time to do that with this. But, you know, the way they were talking about um, when they went back to episode three, when um, Coral was uh, went into Torben's head and everything, that was kind of like what made me start to think. I'm like, maybe. And then, you know, just, you know, the whole soul saying he sensed something familiar and just some of the things that he was saying, that was actually a very nice attempt. But like I said, you know, when I kind of was looking at the arms a little bit, you know, it's just like, yeah, no, I don't think that's just a, yeah, I don't think that's Coral's build, but even so, good Lord Almighty, can we talk about how Jack that dude was? Good Lord Almighty, all these episodes, he has looked like a, like a bumbling, scrawny, I don't want to necessarily say idiot, but, oh boy, yeah, he definitely did not miss on arm days, he definitely did not.
But man, I mean, the and he took everybody out with ease too. I think that's the thing that's, uh, and I still want to know what was up with his helmet and I, I saw he had like an arm brace. So what was up with that? It, it had very weird effect on the lightsabers, something that I'm not very familiar with. So I don't know if it's, um, not Beskar because I mean, Beskar, you know, obviously was like a Mandalorian thing, but this looks so something else. Cause it actually looked like it actually did damage to the lightsabers anytime because you saw him actually like willingly, you know, make contact with that metal. So obviously there's something to it. So if you could please explain what that is, because that is something I am not familiar with. But man, well, you know, I said it at the beginning of the episode that really in order to keep a cannon, everybody really had to die. I wasn't expecting everybody to die off in the same episode though. Soul is the only Jedi left out of that whole group. I mean, if you want to count Osha because she was kind of gotten training, but I really don't count her. I don't know why May flipped. She was going to turn herself in, then all of a sudden she decided not to. I guess things changed when she realized that uh, Kamira was there. Which is kind of weird. I mean, the fact that Kamira even hinted that May should have somehow figured it was him but I don't know but I mean that switch seemed really weird to me but I'm guessing that with him there and with basically the easy work he was making of the Jedi I guess if we're being real I mean if you were going to turn against him and then all of a sudden he was there and basically the people you're going to turn yourself into he just wiped out with no problem uh, you probably flip two I mean, she did, definitely didn't want to really fully flip back to him because she kept running from him, probably because she knew there was no way he was going to take her back. But, oh man. And what does Kamir know? I mean, it, did he just know because of what May said or does he like, no, no. I mean, I really don't know. And the fact that, I don't even know what the make of that whole interaction between Osha and May. I mean, Osha's talking about how the Jedi turned Osha against her, but I'm like, you tried to kill her. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what type of person you have to be, but chances are, if you try to kill me, I'm not going to be your friend. I don't care if we are family, let alone siblings. That's not something I'm going to take very lightly, you know? <laughs> And I'm not going to say anybody else turned me against you when you tried to kill me. I mean, and she, and oh man, I don't know what is May's deal. It's like, I mean, obviously she clearly wants to stay with the coven and everything, but I'm getting such a strong Anakin vibe with her and her whole problem with attachment because she was so attached to her coven, so attached to Osha. But I mean, I would say the only difference is, is that with Anakin's connection, he wanted to save those people, you know, whereas I don't think it was one of those things where, well, I can't really say that because when he thought Padme betrayed him and brought Obi-Wan to kill him, he was about to choke her out. So I guess I can't fully say that he wouldn't kill the people he was attached to, but you know, just, I don't know. We still got, what, three episodes to go. I'm really curious to see what May's plan is. What's going to happen with Osha? Because it looks like Kamir is kind of taking a soft touch to her. Man. Feels like every time I feel like I get an answer, there's like five more questions that pop up. Because I want to know what May's plan is now. What happens when they get back to Coruscant? What's the Jedi Council going to do? And speaking of the council, is there like layers to it? Like, because I think they mentioned something uh, in episode, I think it was in episode four too, where they were talking about like the high council. So it's like, there's like a whole nother tier, whereas they're like on a lower tier, which um, that's another thing that I've been seeing with uh, stuff about episode four is, um, I don't remember his name and I can't believe I didn't make the connection when I first saw him. Like, I think I might have just thought he was the same species. I didn't think he was actually the same Jedi, but the one who was talking about 
um, how absurd it was that a master wouldn't show his face to his pupil. Didn't realize that that was the same Jedi who in The Phantom Menace was talking about how the Sith were extinct for a thousand years or for a millennia and something like that. Which that which really kind of really adds to stuff because I remember he was one of the Jedi where I was like starting to get really bad feelings about but it kind of goes back to what I felt like what the whole point of the show was was to really show the start of the downfall of the Jedi which probably I'm starting to think really technically started with Brendock because they probably had a real big hand if not a soul hand in the death of all those witches but then they went and covered it up and I'm almost starting to think this is the same thing but I'm kind of curious on what happens with Kamir because this is still a hundred years before the Phantom Menace so if um, this one Jedi you know is going off the belief that a Sith has been you know seen for you know a millennia I'm thinking a Kamir has to somehow die before they get off Kofar and probably the same thing with Sol but that makes you kind of wonder what happens with Osha and May and you know that's just probably another cover-up type deal because you know they know may was the one being trained so they probably figure okay master is dead uh don't know what happens to may but let's say she either gets put in prison or somehow dies in some sort of conflict or whatever okay sit are done you know we just brush this under the rug and everything and no one needs to know what happened here you know it is clear how political they're getting which is why, again, it was just so easy for Palpatine to do what he did. And even for the Jedi to really stray off from what their actual roles were supposed to be and become generals and soldiers, you know, when the Clone Wars hit, you know. And I think that's really the whole point of this series is to really show how that all starts. But I'm very curious to see what... I'm really curious now what Kamir's story is now. You know, who trained him? Um, the whole thing about, you know, did he have an issue with the Jedi where maybe he was being trained by them or something like that? Maybe, I don't know if he was just let go or whatever, but man, this almost feels like this needs a whole discussion. This was a very past, and I tell you what, that was probably some of the most awesome lightsaber work. And well, not even just lightsaber battles, just the fights in general in this whole episode, I thought were fantastic absolutely awesome and man those two poor two jedi though that practically came might as well call them jedi kebabs because he kebobbed them all right good lord and again jackie i was not ready for jackie to go i wasn't ready for your to go either man Whew. well i think at the moment that's all i got you know, usually more of my uh, smarter, um, I guess you could say, takeaways come in my recap because, you know, I go back, rewatch the episode, and probably uh, find things I might have missed that might have actually, an um, you know, could have answered questions I had here already that I may have just missed in the first watch through. So, you know, I'll probably watch the episode again a couple more times before I, um, before episode six comes out. You know, and then by the time I do that, you know, do my recap there, you know, I may have already answered some questions and then I usually check out other reactors too and see what they think about it. Cause sometimes they see stuff that I missed and it's like, oh, and it's like, how did I miss that? But either which way I really enjoyed, this is easily the best episode of the season so far. And I kind of expected that, like I said, usually like right around midway is when I really feel like things really should start to kind of pick up because I think right now all the groundwork has been laid out. Now we're ready for you know everything to really we're ready for the ball to start really rolling now so i really expect the rest of the season to um really be hot and heavy probably close to this episode though granted i really kind of hope that next episode is kind of like a um what are we doing now type thing because i think we need a little time to regroup from this episode but either which way easy best episode of the season so far I loved everything about it and honestly the visual with the different color lightsabers was really cool i mean it's like it felt like you got all the colors outside of mace windu's purple but i mean you got yellow you got green you had blue you had red it's like you had all the colors there that was really cool to see you know just all together but 
uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at that. And thank you all for uh, sticking around this long. Um, definitely feel free to check out my other um, Acolyte reactions right over there. And I'll catch you all down the road. <laughs>